How's it going, everybody? Annoying Linux user back again with more sick tech content. And when I say sick, I do mean sick. I'm a little bit ill, so I probably sound really nasally right now. Ugh. So we're just going to have to deal with it for this video. But for the time being, I want to pose a little bit of a question. So in case you're living under a rock like myself, uh, you might have heard that uh, Windows is adding yet more garbage into their operating system just to make the experience that much worse. Forcing trackers on by default, forcing you to make a Microsoft account just to use the operating system, adding an AI powered co-pilot feature to every ARM based installation of Windows, having said AI take pictures and screenshots of every single thing that you do and not blurring out sensitive banking and personal information, and ads, 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 and more ads into your system. It Windows is so invasive that genuinely I think it should be illegal. And people are not happy about this. Every single week I see a new headline of some sort complaining about the latest addition that Microsoft has added to their proprietary operating system. So with all of this information out there that kind of put a little question in my head. What happens when Windows 10 goes end of life? What happens when Microsoft stops supporting it? What happens when you can't get major security fixes anymore? And you don't have much longer to think about that. I'm reading online that it'll go end of life uh, October of 2025. So roughly a year and a half. And for the past few years, I've been genuinely interested in the wider adoption of Linux as a desktop operating system. If you're familiar with it, the whole meme of like, oh, it's finally the year of the Linux desktop. It's finally, go oh guys, it's finally time. People are gonna start using Linux and taking it seriously. So what happens when people are basically forced to take Linux seriously? You know, recently Linux has surpassed the 4% uh, mark on the global desktop operating system market share. So let's be a little bit generous and say that by October of 2025, that number goes up to 5%. You know, the more we hear about Windows 10 going EOL, the more we hear about all the fucking garbage that Microsoft is putting into Windows 11. And the fact that the uh, market share of Windows 11 is actually going down in recent months. What happens when that assumed 5% market share goes to 7%, 8%, 10, 15, just all overnight? The Linux community is going to be inundated with thousands, potentially hundreds of thousands of new users basically overnight. And I worry that the community is definitely going to have growing pains. Already we're having a lot of growing pains. I mean, I myself am relatively new to the Linux community. I've only been using it as my daily operating system for about three years now. And I still run into problems and I still run into interesting things. Though that's probably due to my choice of an Arch-based distribution, but you know, that's besides the point. I think one of the biggest things that is preventing people from switching over is just because they're used to Windows. Humans are funny like that, even though we have a more efficient, more uh, useful tool available to us, we still decide to use the um, tool that we're familiar with. And it makes sense, if you're trying to get online and you're trying to do what I'm doing here, and you're trying to make videos and your livelihood depends on it, why would you throw away three, four months of potential work that you could be doing making videos trying to relearn all of your tools? It doesn't really make much sense in terms of the business of content creation. And that's just content creation. We have to take into account all manner of professions that are done mainly on a computer. Because I'm sure everyone is aware that you will have to relearn some things when you're trying to use Linux. And that is going to take time. Time that you probably don't have. And one thing we actually need to talk about is the hardware requirements of Windows 11. See, it's not really talked about much anymore considering it's old news, but Windows 11 requires you to have a very specific module on your motherboard called a TPM module, or a Trusted Platform module. I think I said module twice. I think that was redundant. Whatever. Now, any modern board in the past, I don't know, five, six years will have this module and will work just fine. I could be getting the dates wrong on that. The TPM thing might actually be like a lot older than I think it is, but you know, whatever. But uh, what do you do about the computers that don't have the TPM module? Microsoft adding in this arbitrary hardware restriction to their operating system is effectively locking out millions of users out of their, out of their proprietary OS. So if those people can't transfer over, they're either going to go to Mac OS or they're going to try Linux. So my main prediction here is that a majority of those users are going to at least try out Linux. 
you know, people who can are probably just gonna bite the bullet and just be like, fuck it, I'll deal with the invasive nature, I'll switch over to Windows 11, fuck you Microsoft, and just continue to complain without actually doing anything about it. Because if it's one thing gamers can do that you can always count on is complain without doing anything about it. And I think for the most part, the greater Linux community is gonna be okay because the documentation in this space is fucking unreal. So I think the knowledge is out there, but the problem I think is not from documentation, it's from human nature. That human nature being that uh, unwillingness to try something new because you're so used to how things used to work before. And I don't really have a one size fits all solution to all of this, but I am interested to hear what a lot of you have to think about this. Because it is a problem that we're going to have to solve as a community going forward. I know for myself, I'm going to put more effort into trying to uh, document my experience on Linux and try to make more like concise, easily digestible uh, guides and walkthroughs on how to do basic things on Linux and how to do video editing. Because I know that there are going to be some independent content creators who really don't want to use Windows 11 or can't use Windows 11. So... And when it comes to things like development or general office work, I'm, I'm sure all the documentation already exists for all of that. But it's definitely going to be an interesting uh, couple years going forward, seeing as Microsoft is so hellbent on absolutely ruining their operating system. It's, it's actually kind of funny. Like, Jesus Christ, they were trying... Okay, so they have this, like... AI powered like repair IT guru thing built into the settings page to try to like suss out what thing is wrong with your computer and to try to like suggest options that you could turn on and off to make your computer run better, right? And uh, one of the things that this AI powered thing was suggesting was to change your default search engine back to Bing to make your computer run faster. You really can't make this shit up, can you? Dude, ads in the file browser? Are you fucking kidding me? Don't even get me fucking started on all the information that Microsoft is pulling off of you. Holy shit. So, yeah, I guess that's just kind of my piece for right now. Uh, I am a little bit interested to see how the next couple years are going with the potential mass migration to Linux. And I'm curious to know what other members of this community are trying to do to make this as easy for new people as possible. I may not be able to solve every problem that you might have if you switch over, but the documentation is out there and I want to be able to point people in the right direction. So if you have any uh, good resources for new users on Linux, let me know so I can just sort of like have a compiled list of a bunch of different stuff that I can just reference in the future. And uh, thank you for watching. I know that this video is kind of nothing, I guess. It's just more of like an open discussion kind of thing, but it's still something that I've been thinking about for a while and I just want to like get out there now while it's still fresh in my mind. So thank you for watching. Uh, thank you to the YouTube lads for helping me out directly. If you want to do that, there's a button down there that can do it. And then there's the all the other YouTube YouTuber garbage that's down there. I'm not going to harp on you about it. Okay. Have a good one, everybody.